our Secret Labs Create Film series, where ideas get made. Proudly sponsored by WW Creative, the accountants of the creative industries. Uh, we have been speaking with David Vo, uh, a good friend of mine and now exceptionally cool as he's a real author, which I think objectively, like in terms of things you do in your life is just cool. And he's written this great book, uh, which couldn't be more for me. It's called Stronger, How to Build Strength, The Secret to a Longer, Healthier Life. This is going to be a sort of simple, reasonably quick fire range um, of questions that hopefully offers a fantastic opportunity uh, to delve into the intricacies of strength training for seniors and its role in promoting longevity. So I will try and stay on track, which obviously is the most difficult thing. So I'll read, the, I'll re, I'll read out the questions that I've written. So what inspired you to write stronger and focus on the importance of strength training for aging populations? It was my involvement in healthy aging projects that feed into the UK Healthy Aging Challenge. It was a moment a few years ago where I was had an epiphany in that it was my or, or the middle-aged cohort of people who had the most to lose and gain. Um, we tend to, I think, mistakenly focus in on healthy aging projects focused on people already aged. So why not write something that helps people prevent the vast majority of the physical things that are associated uh, with aging, such as shortness of breath, weakness, frailty, sarcopenia, osteoporosis. This book is a rationale for middle-aged people to prevent these things ever being an issue to deal with in the first place. In your book, you discuss the scientific evidence uh, supporting strength training in older age. Could you share um, either a specific piece of advice, a particular study or a particular individual that heavily influenced your perspective? I don't think there's a partic one particular individual. I've met so many inspirational people in clinic and there's been a lot of commonality now being spoken about um, a lot of independent research and academics coming to the same conclusion that strength is the missing part that we often um, ignore when we're trying to put together a, a training program for the average person, for, so we say, a population of people. Um, and so what we see now is like a real zeitgeist around the subjects of strength training. Um, what I wanted to do is actually write something for the middle-aged audience as well, um, understanding that that has its own challenges. Um, because as I said in, in question one, if we adopt healthy habits, build habits in in middle age that include strength training, um, then we can prevent a lot of those things. So there wasn't one particular person, although one person I do acknowledge in this book amongst the other experts is a guy called um, Professor Samir Gray, who is who are on the same page in that he's 75 and he is convinced the majority of ageing-based um, uh, physical manifestations of ageing shouldn't really have to show themselves until you're well into your 90s, right? So a lot of the things that we associate with aging can be prevented by keeping physically strong. Okay, so question three, um, many older adults, he says, like me, <laughs> many older adults might be intimidated by the idea of starting strength training, even if they have a reasonably committed, you know, sort of fitness program. They run, they run two or three times a week and so on. What advice do you have for beginners, especially those who have never lifted weights before, whether they're coming at it from a having no exercise regular within their, their kind of weekly framework or having exercise that doesn't include strength? Start small. Um, the most important thing, as we know, is to make a start. Um, pick something from the book that where I give examples of where you can put strength-based activities into your daily routine and don't call it strength if you don't want to. Just leverage your lived environment to begin with. You know, hold a few wall sits, hold a, a static squat above the toilet. Little things like that accumulate over time. And you'll find that that naturally progresses onto the, the more formalized programs that there are examples of as well. Um, but make a start. Um, and even if you just stick with those daily incorporations of um, physical challenges in your day, that's still strength training. That's still increasing your strength and that will still accumulate over time and benefit you years down the road. So the most important thing is to find something that you enjoy, find something that fits with your life right now, and make a start. Question four, how does Stronger uh, address some of the kind of 
common misconceptions about strength training and its relationship to, you know, to aging and improving how you age. Uh, can you give an example of a, of a specific myth that you debunk in the book or kind of, you know, a common, mis common misconception? Uh, go hard and go home. You know, you've got to, you know, I think, you know, pain is weakness leaving the body is another classic that, that it keeps me in business as an osteopath. <laughs> Uh, I don't, don't buy into sound bites and fitness influencer myths that um, aren't applicable to your age. You know, accept where you are if you're middle aged. Give yourself permission to be middle aged. Harvest the wisdom that comes with having lived quite a bit of life already, and then do what suits your body, your frame, your experience. Again, make a start, um, and don't get drawn into any any um, sound bite. Anything that sounds like a sound bite, delete, ignore. Just do what resonates with you as a middle-aged person. Um, you've, um, question five, sorry. Um, you have undoubtedly kind of encountered numerous success stories, not only through your research and your advocacy, but you know, through your clinic and through your work as an osteopath. Um, I know you spoke briefly about joy before, but can you share any particular memorable transformations that stand out to you? And I think joy was was the pivotal one for me. But I mean, there are countless um, scenarios where I've worked with someone um, in their fifties, um, and we've started when they've been in their fifties, and I'm still kind of still working with them occasionally when they're now in their sixties, and they're just living their best life. There is no, in terms of inspiration, what I would say is that when you're in your middle life, your midlife, a midlifer, you you need to make it really unsexy. You need to just grind and expect to be in really good shape because you, the daily practice of that makes it more realistic. Um, I've got older patients who are literally doing the Inca trail with two prosthetic knees. You know, I've got, I've got people who um, are, uh, are saying yes to everything in their 70s and 80s. These are the inspirational small stories you know, living their lives out there. They're not running multiple marathons back to back, you know, but they're living the lives that they had dreamed of and wanted. These are the people who get me out of bed in the morning to go into clinic and, and just help them achieve that. So I think the big soundbite stuff for me, I always try to veer away from, um, you know, the big inspirational stories. I like the day-to-day -day stories, you know, can you, can you go to the shops? You know, can you carry the shops back from... <laughs> The supermarket, can you carry the bags back from the supermarket without it being an effort? Those are the success stories that I think you need to all work towards more. Um, question six, uh, you cover you know, quite a lot of the interrelationship between sleep and kind of mental wellness and nutrition. And nutrition plays a significant role in the book and you identify it as being important for muscle health and recovery. How would you say Stronger kind of includes those, you know, pieces of dietary advice that really feel like they're essentially complementary to beginning strength training? So it's not one system in particular. It's not your musculoskeletal system. It's not your nervous system. It's not your digestive system. Um, it's not your connective tissues. It's the way they all integrate together. Um, if you haven't got all of those things on point, then um, you're not gonna do as well as you might have done in terms of your physical mobility, your robustness, your tolerance for life. Um, what I've tried to do is give the basics of everything. Um, there is a bit more detail if you want to dig into it, but if you just read the first three chapters, you'd probably have enough to understand why this is important. Um, and I think that's the way forward. I think we need to simplify things. Although there is some academic stuff in there, I try to put it into everyday, everyday language. So hopefully people, when they finish it, will come away with a different understanding of what strength actually means. Question seven, uh, I really wrote this from the heart. Motivation can be a major barrier <laughs> to maintaining a regular exercise routine, uh, especially for seniors who talk about a lot of fitness that they're probably not doing. Mm. What motivational strategies would you suggest? Um, and especially considering the disparity of individual experiences, you know, I know you spoke about the onboarding of little and often how can you kind of almost gamify or, or, or light that blue touch paper? Because once you've started, you'll start to see the, you know, the benefits. 
If someone committed to doing the the uh, the twelve week program or just to a few uh, of those daily routines, you are going to feel the difference within about six weeks to two months. You will feel the difference. If that's not motivation enough for you, then focus on something you enjoy doing in your life right now. It might be tennis, it might be canoeing, it might be hiking, all those things. What is it you get joy from? And then look at strength training as a way of continuing to do that for as long as you choose to. Strength training isn't strength training for strength training's sake. It is strength training to become better at life. And whatever you enjoy in life, you'll be able to do longer. That's how I would frame it. So in the book, you, 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 th there are a number of sort of watchwords and safeguards without it feeling like you sort of ticked, ticked a sort of health and safety box, you know, sort of checklist. Um, but how do you, you kind of specifically address um, strength training despite common age related issues such as arthritis or osteoporosis or any kind of long term injuries like, mm. um, you know, especially lower back and things of that nature? You know, how do you, how do you integrate that if you feel like your, your on-ramp is more difficult than for others? I won't lie, and if you are carrying some kind of historical injury, as I do, um, then it, is, it, it does take a bit more consideration. Um, for every exercise in the 10 movements that I've broken the fundamental movements down into, which I want people to be strong in, there is always an alternative. Um, if it's not in the book, then you can find some alternatives uh, by working with um, a, a qualified strength conditioning coach or a personal trainer. My point being that you can always work around the problem. Just because you have an injury that means you can't train your legs as well as you might like to have done, it doesn't mean you, you have to let them go completely. Um, the, the whole thing is about having an overall strength in your body anyway. So, you know, if you uh, typically tend to do the things you're good at, then why not work on your weaknesses? For me, my weaknesses involve, you know, anything with a hinge in movement on my back. So I'm very careful with that. But I, I do try to work on it, albeit moderately, because we know that if we just work on our strengths, we won't be a balanced human being. So work on our strengths and weaknesses and try to bring everything up together. Um, this is a big one for me. You know, I think you see it to a certain extent with Apple about the kind of real priority of, technology and health, but also the kind of almost like the gamification of it, yeah. the explosion of fitness apps. There are some, you know, some great ones for weight training that aren't particularly expensive. You know, they're becoming increasingly popular. Does, do you feel like you've, if you haven't gone heavy, that there is some inclusion of it in the book or some mention of it? What's your thought process on that in terms of either just recording it, simplifying the process of making it regular or as a motivational tool because, you know, gamification is your thing? In terms of health tech, I, 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 I'm an advocate for it. I mean, part of my work um, is involved with a healthcare charity and part of that has been co-development of a rehabilitation app. And I'm a big advocate of it because it is a, a, a democratization. You know, you can, for the price of an app download, you can get, you can get, you know, really, really great, you know, medical grade advice. So in terms of gamification, I think whatever, gets you to do it, I'm a fan of. And the next step, no doubt, for this project will be, um, you know, the development of um, a digital version of this, very much focused for midlife, very much focused with some humor. We've given yourself permission to, to have good days and bad days, but, but basically something that motivates you to keep coming back. And finally, uh, I know that you said you kind of um, wanted to steer away from it being too soundbitey. But if I was trying to sell this book, you know, to, to a friend in terms of you've got to get into it, what would you say the main message is, you know, and how do you envisage the book as a whole impacting ideally somebody's approach to, to aging and, and showcasing how being in the best shape you can be, whatever, wherever that is on the scale, is just an essential part of, you know, li living a great life as you get older. Stronger life, longer life, better. Yeah, it's as simple as that. The stronger you are, the more tolerance you have for living your life, the longer you can do it. That's the only sound bite I'm gonna get into, man, because it's that simple. Well, 10 questions I hope that showed that I have read the book, I promised I would read the book. Um, you know, in, in conjunction with the 10 exercises you'll need, 
Um, obviously, I feel because we are of a similar age and, and like similar things that we should probably finish on a kind of predator, you, you know, sort of fist clench. But my biceps just won't handle it. So we'll do we'll, the bump, just, yeah. just a gentle. Well done. Thank you so much. Um, I also like to think that our relationship is born out of the fact that, you know, that if I'd found this book to be boring or just not great, I probably would have told you. Oh, you would have told yeah, me. I would have told you. Yeah. And <laughs> if this book was designed to inspire rather than to guilt people to feel like, wow, this is something I need to take seriously and then really address it and include it within their daily life. Like I positively feel that like I'm like, this isn't something I should ignore. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a great book. And Thank I also you. have it just to be able to say like in a really good way, like in terms of a positive, if there's such a thing as positive jealousy, to be able to say like in life full stop that you are a genuine author, that is just cool as fuck. Thank you, mate. So I Thank read you. it from that regard and just thought my mate's an author and it's just immensely cool. I mean, look, no offense. It's not like you'd written about a wizard, but it's still a pretty good book. <laughs> yeah, sorry, mate. maybe next time. <laughs> Yeah, no, I appreciate if, that. Imagine appreciate if Harry Potter was middle-aged and totally hench. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's something in this. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on, that's your, you, yeah, that's you, you go with it, you run with that, yeah. Um, it's a great book. Thank you. And thanks so much for today, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, me too, thanks for your time. I'm